This video will give you a quick introduction to ArcMap. This is the ArcMap workspace, and over here you'll see there's a table of contents where eventually it'll list all the different data layers that we're using. Uh, this is the map window, and to get started with, we're going to open a third window. If we come up here to this uh, little window with the yellow file cabinet on it and click that, over on the right will pop up uh, an Arc Catalog window. Arc Catalog is sort of like Windows Explorer. It's where you can see the, the tree of files that are either stored on your computer or on a server. And we're going to ask uh, Arc Catalog to connect to a folder that we have on our Splinter server uh, that has a lot of data stored in it. So the first thing we'll do is come up to this Folder Connections line right here and click on that. And then up on the top of the catalog window there's a folder with a little plus next to it and that button is for connecting to a folder so if I click that it'll open up a little dialog where it'll ask me to sort of browse around my computer I'm going to open up my computer there and then connect, connect myself to the X drive which is called data on GIS master server splinter and X is where we have stored all of, uh, all of the department's data so I'm just going to click uh, right on the root of that and hit OK. And you'll see that the X drive shows up here under my folder connections. So now if I click on the little plus next to it, I'll open up the tree of all the different types of data that we have. These are all folders. And I want to go into the new data library. And in here, there are three different folders. One of them is for ESRI data. If I open that, I can see that we have data for Europe. I've got uh, data for streets in North America, some data, uh, I think, from the U.S. Census, and then uh, data from around the world. Let's go take a look at the street map North America data. And in here we finally start to see some of the different types of GIS data. Uh, these are all going to be vector files uh, that contain information about things like the location of airports, uh, cities, county boundaries, highways, etc, etc. Let's go back up and uh, go up to states here. And if I click on the little plus, you can see in here that there are a couple different versions of this file. I'm just going to take the top one and drag it over from the catalog window into my table of contents. And if I drop it under layers, you'll see that it shows up as a data layer with states. And you can see that that's symbolized by these blue areas. And then it also shows up uh, in my map view. So I can see all the US states. And it, I can also see all the Canadian provinces, it looks like. OK, so let's also go and get some rivers. I'll go and get the rivers and drag them over into my layers. And you can see they're drawing here in the map view. There's a lot of rivers. And so it's a pretty dense network that's being drawn. Uh, and you can see just by the way that it's drawing that these rivers have attributes that coordinate them with a particular state. They're drawing state by state because of the way they're organized in the database. If say that we wanted to zoom in on this a little bit, we could come up and get our zoom tool, which is up here in the upper left. These are toolbars up here, and you could actually move them around on the screen, but for the time being, they're docked up here on the top. If I get my zoom tool and come in here and zoom in, on the northeast US. You can see in a bit more detail there are rivers are drying out. GIS is a pretty graphics intensive application and so uh, it's it's taking a lot of resources from the computer to draw these and it's going slowly. Let me zoom in a little bit more on Vermont and New Hampshire uh, in New England you can see those rivers and you can see that this particular states file uh, is actually a pretty generalized version of the state boundaries. I think these are the uh, the administrative boundaries uh, that include things like rights over, over the water. You can see the boundaries extend a bit out into the ocean. So maybe we can go in here and find uh, a slightly different type of municipal boundary. If we come in here to counties, let's drag those on too. And I'm going to put them in between rivers and states because I want them to show up that way on the screen. The hierarchy of the layers work the same way that they do in Illustrator, where a file is drawn in the order that it's listed here. So first it's drawing the rivers, and then the counties, and then the states. And if I wanted to change that order, I could just drag them around. But I think I'd like to have the counties on top. And again, you can see that we now have these county boundaries. You can also turn these layers on and off just by checking or unchecking them. So right now I've got nothing turned on. Uh, there the states are turned on, now the counties and now 
the rivers, finally. All of these files also have attribute information associated with each of the elements that are that are part of these. So for instance, each river in here uh, has attribute information that might talk about its name or its length or other characteristics of it. And the way that you access that attribute information is by coming over to the table of contents and right-clicking on a given file. So we're going to access the attribute table for the counties right now. We've right-clicked on counties. I'll come down to that menu and click Open Attribute Table. It opened up an attribute table with four fields. Uh, each county has a unique ID, and that's something that you can't change uh, because the, the computer needs to know that these are unique objects, and so it's given a unique ID. It also has this bus FID, uh, and that's telling us that all of these are polygons. That's also something that you can't that you can't edit, but it's nonetheless useful to know that all of these shapes are designated as polygons. It also has uh, a name. So here you can see uh, the name of this particular county that's number 10 is Aleutians West, and it has a county key. And my guess is that these are actually all part of the same county, all of these Aleutians West. There's just a number of different islands in this case, part of the Aleutian Islands, that are making up this county. And so that's why there are a number of instances of that, and they all have the same county key. But if we were to scroll down, we can see that there are counties uh, all, all the different counties in the US. I'd also like to show you how to how to select some information. So I'll turn off rivers and say that I wanted to select uh, this county, which I know is Addison County in Vermont. If we come up to the selection tool here, uh, it's got a little pointer with a, a blue selection as part of a square. I'm gonna click on that and then I can come over and just click on Addison County. You can see that it's actually selected from both the county's layers and the state's layer. It's selected Vermont and Addison County. If I turn off states, then it will only select from Addison County. And if I come over and open the attribute table for counties, then down here I can say that I really only like to see selected records. So if I click on that button, then there I go. I get only the record for that county in my attribute table. So you can see like all of them, it's a polygon, but we can see that it's called Addison County and it has uh, this 5001 county key. But I'm just going to deselect this selection. So if I click on the uh, on the white box with a few polygons in it next to the selection box, that's the deselect box. You can also sort information in attribute tables, and to do that, I'm going to come back over to the Arc Catalog screen over here and grab a layer for cities. I'll put that on top of the rivers. And you can see that this is a point feature class, so it's containing a lot of points, whereas the rivers are a polyline feature class, and then down the counties and states are polygon feature classes. If I come over to the attribute table for the cities, and I'll open this up just a little bit, you can see that there's a population field in here telling me that the city of Manning has a population of 1139. And it's something that's very handy to be able to do with an attribute table is to sort these fields. So say that I wanted to see what the city with the largest population was in the US. All I have to do is right click on that population heading and say sort descending. And then it's going to list the city with the highest population. So that's Los Angeles and then uh, sort, sort all the other cities in descending order. So Brooklyn, which is, uh, I believe, a borough of New York, is, is this Brooklyn, uh, has the next highest population, uh, and then down to Chicago, Houston, New York, etc. We can select within the table uh, if we wanted to, say, find what one of these features was on the map. We could select Houston, for instance. So I'll just click on the, uh, the sidebar, that gray part next to that record for Houston. And then if we come back to our map, we'll put the attribute table back out of the way and zoom out a bit on our map using the zoom out tool. It's right up here next to zoom in. And I'll grab the hand tool so we can move our way down towards Texas here. I know that Houston is in Texas, and so I sort of know where to look. But because Houston has been selected here in the attribute table, it'll also be selected as a feature on screen. And so once all the rivers get done drawing, let's actually turn off the rivers because they're sort of just taking a while. Then we can see all of the cities here that are in that feature class, and we can see that Houston has been selected on screen, so we know where it is. 
Finally, I want to show you that you can remove data layers from the table of contents. That will remove them from the map as well. So say I wanted to remove cities altogether, I could just right click on it and say remove. And that won't actually delete the cities file from your computer or from the server. It will just delete your uh, ability to view that within this map. All that the map is storing is a link uh, to that file that's sitting elsewhere on your computer or uh, on the server.